Welcome back to World History. Today what we're focusing on is for you to be able to describe the physical and cultural adaptations of each of the hominid groups that we studied. So let's go ahead and get started. The first hominid that we're going to be discussing is Lucy. Uh, and what physical adaptation did Lucy have? Well, Lucy was the first of the hominids that was able to walk on two feet. Now, how did this change their cultural, uh, their way of life? The physical adaptations, basically, uh, that's the body. How did the body physically look different? The cultural adaptations are how did that body type how did that changed body actually change the way they lived their lives? Well, when Lucy could walk on two feet, she was able to use her hands to defend herself. And they could also carry their children. So. I'm sure you can imagine this helped them survive because they could uh, fight off predators and they could also carry the, their children that would have helped their, their children survive. All right, so the next hominid group that we're discussing is handyman. Now, handyman was taller than, than Lucy and they could make simple tools, simple stone tools. So how did this change their lives? Well, they were able to live in groups, and, and similar to how using the hands to defend, if handyman lived in groups, that would help them fight off attackers, fight off predators. Next up, let's take a look at Upright Man. Now, for a long time, anthropologists actually thought that Upright Man was the first hominid to walk on two feet. That's why they called it Upright Man. But then they found out that Lucy actually could walk on two feet before that. But we still call it Upright Man. All right, so what what was their physical adaptation? Well, they stood upright. They, they were more upright than Lucy. They made tools. They could also make fire and shelters. Now, how did this change their way of life, their, their beliefs? They lived in groups, similar to Handyman. But because they stood upright, they were also able to travel, better yet, let's say migrate. They were able to migrate, and they also built shelters. Now, if you're able to use fire, live in groups, migrate, and build shelters, you're going to have a quite an upper hand on any predators that are trying to eat you or your children. All right, next up, let's talk about Neanderthal man. Oftentimes, Neanderthal man kind of gets a bad rap. It's kind of this idea of the caveman. But if we look at Neanderthal man, they had very large brains compared to their predecessors, the hominids that came before them. It, because of that, they were able to make complex tools. Not just simple stone tools that were uh, just barely sharpened stone tools. They were actually able to put things together into complex weapons and other tools. Now, because of this, they lived in communities. which were bigger than just small groups like Upright Man and Handyman. Neanderthal Man actually lived in small communities. Uh, they were all working for the same 
goals. We also see the the first uh, the first uh, grieving funerals for uh, dead Neanderthals. Uh, so they're the first to really develop this idea of the community where they they take care of each other. They have common goals. And finally, we go to the double wise man ourselves because we're all wise. Double wise, I should say. Uh, now, larger brains with the, the double wise man, they were able to build more complex tools. Uh, they, we became skilled hunters and we created artwork. And how did that change our culture? Uh, we actually began expressing thoughts in pictures and symbols, which doesn't sound like much, but uh, this, this leads to a, a great deal of artwork and uh, leads to the written word. So this is very important. You wouldn't have this entire lesson without the physical adaptations of the double wise man, Homo sapiens sapiens. So that is the lesson for today. My question that I have for you before we end this lesson is how was, and remember you should be able to answer this just by looking at the chart that we've gone over. How was Lucy different from other animals? All right, I'll give you some time to think about that. My second question is this, how did walking upright change upright man? Upright man's culture his way of life, their way of life. So the two questions that we have, how was Lucy different from other animals? Should be able to answer that very easily. And how did walking upright change upright man's culture? Very good. We're finished. Take care.